I want to start off by talking about the first moment that you realized you wanted to be an artist. Talk about that, maybe that first song that you heard or that first moment where you realized you wanted to be an artist. Um, it's kind of funny because it wasn't ever this like defined moment. I think I, I just kind of always knew music was a place I could go where I was, I was safe and I felt happiest when I was listening to music or um, you know, writing a story that maybe could be a song. But um, I think that it was when I was about seven or eight years old, I would go in my garage. That's when it started. <laughs> I would go in my garage because the only place I could go where I could be alone because everybody else in my house, I have a brother and a sister and a mom and a dad and the walls are paper thin, so I couldn't sing in my room. So I went in the garage and I would sing. And I think it was in those little moments of pretending I was on a stage when I was really singing to my garage doors that I just kind of realized this is my passion. It's what I love to do. I just love singing. So. I think that was kind of the defining moments. Now you have a lot of fun with uh, taking covers and making them your own. If people go to your YouTube channel, they can see a, a bunch of the covers that you do. Um, mm -hmm. And you actually did a mashup that has uh, Katy Perry's Unconditionally and uh, Journeys Don't Stop Believing. And you kind of mash these two songs together. Now what, mm -hmm. what prompted that collaboration? <laughs> um, in all honesty, I grew up listening to a wide variety of music because of my parents and so I wanted to, it was my first cover, my first kind of coming out for people who didn't know me to find my music so I wanted to mash two songs that an older generation could like and then a song that my generation listens to so by taking those two songs and mashing them together you kind of got a big age group that could like the song. So it was definitely beneficial. A lot of um, my parents' friends liked it. So you know, so it was definitely cool because everyone can kind of relate to one of the songs. So very cool. My producers thought I was insane. They're like, "Are you serious? You're gonna you're gonna match these two songs? There's no way we can do that." I'm like, "Yes, there is." And I was so stubborn because they didn't want to do it. I'm like, "We're gonna do it, and it's gonna be acoustic too." So all right, your debut uh, EP came out in 2013. Um, feature six songs. Now, I want to talk about a little about like the writing process behind that and the recording process leading up to that release. Okay, the writing process was so much fun for me. I was I started writing for the EP um, officially when I was sixteen in the studio, but the writing myself in my bedroom <laughs> happened about when I was fourteen. The storytelling aspect of it, because I didn't play guitar, and um, I just kind of got melodies in my head and stories, personal stories that I wanted to tell. Um, so I first sat in my room and I wrote out the story in terms of like poetic form and then I took it into my songwriters when we decided, when I talked to my parents and we decided that we were gonna you know, go ahead and do an EP and uh, sat in with them and I said, listen, I have a story, I have the basic format of what I want for the song and I would kind of sing the riff that I could hear in my head with it and then my songwriter, Christian, pulled out a guitar and whipped it out. And then my other songwriter, Brock, he's like, oh, hey, OK. And then he turned around and did it on the computer. And we just kind of made it. That was the initial songwriting process. And then we went in for final production. So it's all really awesome because they're my stories first. You know, I didn't tell somebody, write this song for me. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. And I think that some artists, did it, maybe for some artists, that they do that. And maybe that's their process. But for me, I can't relate or can't give a genuine vibe in a song if it's not my story. And um, yeah, so it's all cool to know that those are all real events for me. <laughs> now, uh, on your on your EP, there seems to be, uh, on some of the songs, you can see a lot of uh, different influences in there. Uh, there seems to be a little uh, Taylor Swift, uh, Swift influence going on there, especially on uh, You Got Me Thinking. There seems to be a lot on that one. Was there a... Was there a lot of T-Swift listening during that? Uh... There was. Um, when I was 13, I was I was a Swifty. Um, <laughs> I was definitely a big fan of hers. Uh, just because, I mean, come on, when you're 13 years old and you're so insecure and you want to look up to somebody, at the time, she's an incredible role model. So, yeah, I think you want to be like your role model. So I guess, yeah, she had inspiration in there. <laughs> 
who would you say like uh, if you could say what else combined on that who would it be um maybe some Katy Perry I wanted I, it was really awesome because going back to the writing process um, for each of the songs I would give an example before the writing session I said I want my song to kind of sound like this or have this kind of vibe so I gave an example of and of Monsters and Men. I mean, I did that song eventually for a cover, and then I had a pink song I showed them, you know, and I think that that was for Falling Apart, I showed them a pink song, and every song had a different kind of model I showed the songwriters before final production to give them an idea, you know. Um, but definitely a little Katy Perry, maybe some Ingrid Michaelson, um, I think so, maybe. Now, when you cover songs, I noticed, um, it's a little bit different vocally. I don't know if the, the covers were done after the EP or not, or... Yeah, they were done afterwards. There's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say, maybe a little bit more maturity in the vocals, in the covers, yeah. and there's a lot uh, different feel than what's in the EP. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, like a lot of the stuff um, that you're covering, uh, maybe a little bit deeper lyrically. Mm-hmm. Do you see yourself, do you see the stuff that you're writing yourself as you're progressing as a songwriter? Because obviously a lot of these songs were written when you were very young. Yeah, I'm 18 now, definitely. Yeah. There's a little, there's a big maturity gap between 16 and 18, I think, that you kind of go through. Do you see the stuff that you're writing and putting out on your own EPs kind of gravitating more and sounding like what you're doing vocally on your, on your covers and kind of those two kind of meeting somewhere in the middle? Yeah, definitely. Um, since the EP has come out, I have grown as a vocalist and as a musician, um, which is awesome to kind of be proud of and say. Uh, my voice has changed because I've grown up a little more, and uh, I do see the new music I'm writing not mirroring what the covers are or what I'm listening to. I want to be original, and but I definitely bring influence and inspiration from the artists that I listen to. And I definitely see that impacting my new writing that I'm doing and um, new studio work, so definitely, yeah. Covers are a great way to just kind of learn more about yourself. And I, had, I was in a conversation the other night about, with my friend about this. He was so confused why I was doing so many covers and I have two more coming out. And I'm like, well, it's great for people to, to get fans while you're busy working on an EP or you're busy writing. It's great to kind of give fans and keep them interested and keep growing fans, you know? So, not only are you giving things to your fans, but you're having practice and creating little music videos and being creative in new aspects of that and storytelling and it's very, it's so interesting being able to tell somebody else's story. Somebody else sat down and wrote a song and I can process it for what I want to and then put my spin on it and how I would have done it. So it's it's just a whole cool new creative side, I think. It's just, that's how it is for me, so, yeah. Yeah, the, the Little Talks video is probably uh, one of my favorites as far as, like, uh, how you do the vocals and everything and how you kind of made it your own, and I can see you doing something kind of in that style, not copying, but taking, taking your vocal yeah. ability that you put in that song and making your own song with, like, even deeper lyrics and doing something yeah. along that line. There's definitely a folk aspect to it that wasn't as prevalent on the record because I didn't really know what kind of artist I wanted to be yet. In all honesty, the record was just kind of, hey, I really want to be in a studio and I want to make awesome music because it was my passion for so long. And when you're first writing and becoming an artist, you really don't know who you want to be yet. You don't know until you kind of experiment. But I feel like I'm going to be ending up more like a folk artist than anything else. And I think that kind of grew when uh, I'm pointing to my guitar over here. Um, <laughs> I think that grew with learning how to play guitar. And when you learn an instrument, you kind of learn different aspects of your voice because you're just experimenting. So I have a really cool song that I wrote a little while ago called Fraction of Time. And I'm finally getting able to take it to the studio next month. And I've got a full week blocked out. And I'm so excited to be able to work on this song. Um, I had written songs before this. Fraction, before Fraction of Time, but after I wrote that song in, I want to say March, I felt like I think I'm a songwriter now, and it was, it's, I'm really excited to be able to kind of pull that folk sound out in this song. So what's the next step for you? Like, what are you putting your focus on basically in like the next six months? Well, in the next six months, I 
I'm getting ready to go on an awesome trip to Manila. I don't know if you saw that or anything, but um, I did a cover of Tenor IFC by Ed Sheeran with the wonderfully talented Braden Wood. I'm pointing like he's here, but he's not. But he was <laughs> he was in that video, and I asked him because he had a big fan base. And as I put out the other two covers, I'm like, this is awesome, but. I really want girls my age to kind of find me. And he had a lot of young girls following his music. So by bringing him onto that video, I knew I'd get a lot of viewers. And they're somehow all based in the Philippines and in Manila. So they really gravitated towards the covers and then they found my EP. So I will be headlining um, a show over there and then opening up for Braden over in the Philippines in May. So I am very, very, very excited for what that's gonna hold. So it's really right now just releasing two more covers that I have. Very soon I'm shooting those, writing new music, getting back in the studio, and preparing for the Philippines trip. And also playing coffee shops and as many shows as I can over in Orlando and in Tampa and anywhere else. So it's pretty much what it's like going on. <laughs> well, you're attending college now. You just started that. So, uh, what are you working towards on that, and are you looking to do like a full-time music career after you get that done? Music is always going to be a huge driving force in my life. Um, I don't think anything will stop me from doing music because it's a big part of who I am, but school is so important for me. I, I want to be able to have my education, and it's something I've always wanted to do and be involved in college. and. So I'm going to St. Leo University right now, and I'm just going for my um, Associates of Business. And I'm thinking that after I get my Associates, I will go to UCF and you know be involved in as much as the Orlando music scene as I can while going to school. Um, but if not, then I will have my Associates degree and pursue music full force if it at the time is if I'm able to. So school won't stop me from doing music, and you know it's. It will always be there. <laughs> Are there any words? I know you have your, your fan base in Manila. They even have, I think, their own page. They have multiple pages. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, we have, like, there's a Eden Shereen PH page, uh, page on Facebook. There is um, an Eden Sunshine page on in, on Twitter. Shereen is queen. <laughs> I've seen that. Um, <laughs> They they call themselves the sunflowers because I was using the sunflower emoji so much. It's my favorite flower. And um, I would always just be putting that. And they kind of just caught on to it and started doing it too. And they were asking me what they should be called as a fan base. And I'm like, the Edenies? No. Shereenies? No. And all of these names, it just didn't sound right. I'm like, well, why not the sunshines or the sunflowers? And they just kind of clicked with it. I, I think I said it once or somebody said it once and it just stuck with them and it's so cute. They're awesome. They send me the sweetest messages and tweets and not just from the Philippines but from the States and just any of the fans are just so sweet and kind and to know that somebody wants to give you that much love just because you're creating music is absolutely incredible. So thank you to them. <laughs> All right, so we got to go over, uh, make sure everybody can find you. So yes, definitely. Your debut EP, they can listen to it on Spotify. It's on there. Yeah. Um, you can buy it on all the major uh, digital downloads. You can buy it on iTunes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's on Amazon right now. It's five dollars and ninety four cents for the whole EP. Um, yep. They can find you at Facebook slash Eden Shireen Music. Yep. Or www.edenshireen.com. Yep. And what's your Twitter? My Twitter is Eden underscore Shireen. And I love posting things on my website. And that's kind of the main source would be my website. And it all kind of branches out from there onto Facebook and everything. But message me. That's what I love the most. When you message me and email me or tweet me or write on my wall, it makes my day so much brighter. <laughs> so when fans do that, um, letting me know they like the music or how their day was, it just makes me so happy. So I want to be friends with my fans. I don't want them to feel like I'm above them in any way because I was a very insecure small girl and I didn't have friends and I always felt like people were kind of, I would be looking up at people and I didn't, I don't want anybody to ever feel small ever. So 
um, be my friends and because you're my fans, be my friends. <laughs> And some days I can't even dress myself It's killing me to see you this way Cause though the truth may very this Ship will carry a body safe to shore Oh no, did I get too close? Oh did I almost see what's really on the inside? All your insecurities, all the dirty laws.